Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from QBKing77.com here with the Priv made by BlackBerry. The BlackBerry that runs Android and comes with a physical keyboard. I uh, have lots of thoughts on this device actually. As you guys know, I love physical keyboards. So let's go ahead and get started, do a full review. Now I first want to talk about design and this is a, definitely a different design for any Android phone I've used recently. On the back of the device, you have the 18 megapixel camera. I'll go in detail pretty soon on that. LED flash, you have the BlackBerry logo. And then the back actually has a soft touch, very grippy feel to it. And the grip is great when using the device one-handed because it's very easy to slide up the display then because your hand will not move because of how much grip there is to it. It doesn't get sticky or anything like that. It's just a lot of grip. I actually do like it a lot. On the right side of the device, you have three buttons, two volume rockers up and down, and then the middle button acts as a mute button, whether it's sound coming out of the speakers or if you're on a phone call, it will mute your microphone. When it comes to these buttons in general, they're pretty flush with the device. They aren't raised very much, and there's really not much texture difference, so it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the two without actually looking at the device. And then when you move it over to the left side, you have one button, and that's power button. Same exact style button as the volume rockers, and I really do not like having the power button on the left side here. It's uh, actually a little annoying at times, especially because it does not have double tap to sleep either. You have to rearrange your hand to actually get to that button that's on the left side. Now up at the top of the device, you have an SD card along with a SIM card slot and a microphone. One thing to make note of is when you have the device slid up, these corners are actually a little bit sharp. So I find myself when I'm actually trying to close the device, I'll, tr I'll usually push down on a corner and I notice it's pretty uncomfortable when actually pushing it down. Down at the bottom, you have your charging slot and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the front of the device, you have a speaker grill that has that same grippy feel that the back of the device does. And I've been pretty underwhelmed by the speaker. I actually want to demonstrate something for you. Now, what I want to demonstrate is when this speaker gets to pretty low volume, it gets pretty fuzzy and it's noticeable when you have the volume below half. So I'm hoping the microphone can pick it up. I'm going to play a song and put it pretty low, but you can still hear that fuzziness that comes out. All right, I used that mute button, as you saw on the side, but I hopefully the microphone picked it up. But if not, what I'm talking about is just a faint fuzz that kind of comes out of it. And it's not noticeable when it's above half volume because uh, obviously it, it, the sound actually drowns out that fuzziness. But it doesn't get too loud. It's pretty underwhelming, but it is nice to have a front-facing speaker. And on the top, at the front of the device, you have a 2-megapixel camera earpiece, and then you'll notice a pulsing LED light, which is actually pretty bright. And you have an option to turn it off while the display is on so it's not going to pulse when the screen is on. So if I turn the screen on, you'll see the pulsing stopped, which is great because looking at the display, you did not want to see that light keep blinking. And then finally, before I get to the keyboard, I want to talk about overall design of it. And I love the way it looks. It has a bit of a curved display, as you have noticed, not as prominent as the uh, S6 Edge, but it's definitely a curve there. They utilize it a little bit. I'll talk about that in just a second, but it looks really great. Um, it's very flat at the bottom. You can actually stand it up and you can just totally use it. And then when you slide it out, um, I want to say it doesn't feel extremely premium. On the back, actually, I talked about this in my impressions, but uh, it has a little bit of an indent in the back and you can kind of feel it while you're using it. And also important to note is when you tap on the display, a little bit louder than a unibody design. It's just kind of noticeable that the screen's actually detached from the device itself. The sliding mechanism is really great. I love the amount of give that they have to it. Uh, it's actually perfect. Also, when it comes to design, they did a great job with this because you'll see this display is raised a little bit, so it's easier to push up on the display. And then if you look closely, this little metal bar actually sticks out just a little bit, so you can kind of grab it with your finger. It's easier to grab and pull down with your finger. So they did a very good job. I have no difficulty at all sliding this up and actually bringing it down. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the keyboard. So here it is. It's a four row QWERTY keyboard, uh, pretty similar looks to a standard BlackBerry keyboard on previous Blackberries. However, it is a little more cramped 
than I'm sure you're used to if you're coming from a BlackBerry. Either way, after about a week, I pretty much got used to using the device. There is a backlight to the keyboard as well. It's touch sensitive. I'll talk about those interactions in just a second. And the backlight is perfect. It's not too bright when you're sitting in the dark in your bed. It's really great. Now I've gotten a lot better at using this keyboard and I know I can improve even more if I continue to use it. However, it still feels just a little bit cramped. So if you have, I guess, bigger thumbs than average, I would say you might want to actually try out the, the keyboard before you buy it. Now it's touch sensitive and it has actions to it. So I can swipe down and it's gonna bring up a list of symbols. And if I tap on one of them, let's say I use V, it's gonna use that upside down question mark. If I swipe down again, it's going to go to other symbols again, swiping down, it gets rid of them. Now what I can go ahead and do is actually use a back gesture and it's going to delete words. So a full word at a time with a back gesture. You'll also see these word suggestions right here. If I swipe up where the word is, it's going to select that specific word. And also even on the right side or left side, depending on what side of the keyboard, it's going to select that. So you have three options to actually select from. It works most of the time. You actually have to be pretty deliberate about it, but you'll see right now it's not necessarily registering all of my actions going into it. Um, I would say maybe 85, 90% of the time it recognizes it. Not only does it have typing gestures, you can also use it to navigate through certain pages and it's very useful when scrolling on a web page. I must say, especially because your finger's not blocking the display at all. You can just use that entire 5.4 inch display and view all the content while you're scrolling. And speaking of that 5.4 inch display, let's go ahead and check it out. So it's a 5.4 inch AMOLED 1440 by 2560 display. I do wanna make note, it does have double tap to wake as I've shown, it does not have double tap to sleep. However, I found myself whenever I pulled the device out of my pocket, I would just kind of slide up and slide down the keyboard, which obviously gets a lot of usage out of it. It doesn't feel like anything's going wrong with the sliding mechanism. I wonder how it would do after maybe a, a year or so, but like I said, I just found it easier to just kind of go like that the display turns on and then I unlock the device. It is protected by Gorilla Glass 4, and as I said, it is curved as well, and I love the curve. I'm not gonna lie, I really liked it on the Galaxy S6 Edge. I wouldn't say it was worth that $50 extra that it cost, but I really like the aesthetics of a curved display. Now, overall, it's a really great Quad HD display. Uh, the colors look very good. It's not the best one out there. I would say the Nexus 6P and Galaxy Note 5's S6 display actually does look better in this one and it doesn't get as bright as those either i wish would get a little bit brighter but you're not going to go wrong 1440p display it looks fantastic uh colors are are good but like i said it's not as good i mean you're comparing 1440p display so you can't really complain so uh i mean you're not going to go wrong with this display one of the most important things i want to talk about is performance now it has a snapdragon 808 processor with three gigabytes of ram which are pretty top-notch specs and performance has not been that great. And it's honestly kind of strange because when you're playing high-end games, it runs just fine. It's fluid, it's smooth, it looks great. But when I'm doing simple tasks, trying to multitask between a couple basic apps, some animations get jittery and slow. Sometimes it takes even a few seconds to load up an app and just kind of stalls. It really makes no sense and it's really annoying because I honestly wanted this to perform well because of the specs that it has, but doing basic tasks, it's pretty unacceptably slow. Hopefully a software update can fix that, but there's no promises when it comes to that. Like I said, I'm, it's apparently gonna get Marshmallow, but we're not exactly sure when, and then you don't even know if that software is actually gonna get fixed. Now, speaking of software, out of the box, it came with Android 5.1.1, and it feels very similar to stock Android in certain ways with some added tweaks. So you'll see 5.1.1, I believe BlackBerry said at some point next year that it's going to get Marshmallow. Not too sure when, uh, but there are, like I said, a lot of added tweaks to BlackBerry. Even the launchers tweak where you got apps, you swipe over, you got widgets, you have shortcuts to certain things as well, which is pretty nice. If you want to schedule, add an event or add a contact real quick, you can throw one of those on your homepage or even just swipe over to it. Uh, apps are alphabetical. You can sort them default, newest, most used as well. So scrolling down, it's a vertical drawer that are categorized alphabetically. Swiping up from the home button actually brings you to some shortcuts. So you do have Google Now still, you can customize the shortcuts. So I, you'll see iBlackBerry Hub and BlackBerry Search as well. Now to utilize that curved display, you'll see on the right side here, you have a little bar that you can swipe over from. It's not a very fluid animation to swipe over. You'll see it just kind of appears. Uh, where you can have your calendar, you see Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving tomorrow to everyone. You have your hub, you have tasks as well, and then you have your most used contacts where you can quickly make phone calls or send messages. Swiping down from the top, you got your notifications, of course, and you'll notice a couple icons right here, and it separates them categorized by specific apps. So if you wanna show only one app, 
You can, you can go back and forth between the two. It's nice when you have a lot at once to categorize. If you say, if you have, you only wanna see the email ones or if you only wanna see your text messages, you can quickly switch between them. Now going in, jumping into settings, I wanna to go to display settings. Now here's a couple things. So you'll see wake up gestures where you can double tap to wake the screen, you can turn that off. Now one thing I wish you could customize is when I double tap the screen, I want it to go to my lock screen for sure. However, there's times when I just wanna, when I swipe up from the keyboard, I don't want it to go to my lock screen. There's no way to customize that. However, you can change it. So what screen wakes to, you can have it just unlock otherwise instead of notifications. But that in that case, double tapping actually unlocks the device and so does swiping up from the keyboard. Now the recent app screen is different and it's kind of goofy and inconsistent and I really don't like it. So it's nice you can actually change that. It's a nice addition from BlackBerry. So you can go to tiles, which going into it, it's much more consistent. They're not different, which I actually don't mind the tiles, but then you have stock Android Rolodex that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Below display are the swipe shortcuts that I mentioned, and then you have advanced interactions where you can flip the device to mute it, you can flip to save power, putting the device in sleep mode when you place it face down, and then hold to stay awake so it recognizes when you're holding the device and it won't go into sleep mode. One thing I wanna make note of is actually, this device does have Wi-Fi calling, and I don't wanna use Wi-Fi calling, so I turned it off, but it kept bugging me to turn it back on, and it actually got pretty annoying after a while. It kept popping up even though I shut it off. All right, so you saw, saw how slow BlackBerry Hub opened up, and it should not be that slow. You saw I tapped on it, and it just kind of waited, and then it finally rolled up. But let's talk about BlackBerry Hub. That was just a performance issue, but not necessarily a BlackBerry Hub issue. So um, you'll see it keeps them all together. You can have Twitter, you can have text messages, you can have emails, all put into one. I found it to be overwhelming, and I really don't like BlackBerry Hub. Some of you might, though, so it's actually kind of nice. You can snooze them, you can show on red. Uh, swiping over, and like I said, you have your different accounts, your BBM account, which I didn't even use because I don't know anyone that uses that anymore. Um, your Facebook, your Twitter, all of them are all right here. I like them separate. Now you also have an app called DTech by BlackBerry, which is their security. Priv stands for privacy in a sense. So it lets me know it's fair. Unless you use a screen lock, you pretty much can't get above fair. But it gives you some kind of options for certain specific things such as apps. It kind of lets you know how much info all of these apps are using. So let's say, for example, I go to Instagram. You'll see location. It was accessed 36 times. So that's something that Instagram acts, accesses. And it tells you how many times it uses that specific feature. I also noticed it was buggy in a sense that apps would crash pretty often. So you see the phone app was the one that crashed the most. Google Play services crashed a couple times. Facebook did as well. So overall, the software was just buggy and it just got a little annoying after a little while. Now, when it comes to battery life, it has a 3,410 milliamp hour battery, which is a very large battery, actually. So you expect very good battery life. However, not so much. It does have wireless charging. It has uh, fast charge as well and a neat charging indicator when you have it plugged in. And when it comes to battery life, it's not good. It is below average. I get a, on average three hours screen on time. You'll see right here, two hours, 30, 23 minutes, two hours and a half. I got maybe three hours and 20 minutes a couple times, but overall it was not good. And it's very unfortunate because of how large that battery is. Battery life just wasn't good. Right, so let's move on to that 18 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization. So right away, I wanna talk about how slow this shutter speed is. So let's go ahead and take a picture. And it, that was, unacceptably slow. Uh, it comes down to it when something's maybe moving slightly, that's gonna be a problem. Um, when it comes to the app, you have your filters right there. You can switch to video and panorama. You can switch to that front facing two megapixel camera and it's terrible. So don't plan on taking any good selfies with that front facing pic, uh, camera. HDR auto mode, you have uh, flash settings, everything's standard. But like I said, that shutter lag is just a little unacceptable. Hopefully, a software update might fix that, it might not though. So let's go ahead and go over to a couple pictures I took. When it comes down to it, I would say the camera is definitely above average. I have no complaints other than that shutter lag. This is a lower light situation. Lower light, it struggles a little bit, uh, but it's above average when it comes to other cameras. Um, and then here is outside detail, it, it captures it very well. Um, here's a far away shot, it looks really good. So, I mean, overall, no real complaints about the camera other than that shutter speed. It's also nice to have that little exposure 
option right here. If you're not getting quite the exposure you want, you can quickly swipe through and get that specific exposure that you want. Okay, so time for some final thoughts on the BlackBerry Priv. And I really wanted to like this device, I did. And I honestly do like specific aspects of it. I love the design, it's fantastic, it's well-weighted. The keyboard's great, it's a little compact, like I said, however you do get used to it, and I'm just someone that likes physical keyboards in general. It's hard to find that on an Android phone nowadays. But when it comes down to it, that software, those software bugs I mentioned, and also those performance issues I mentioned, are just too much. I don't understand why they're there. And also that battery life as well. Those three things in conjunction with each other, just I can't recommend this device because of that. If you can kind of deal with those things, this is a great device. I feel like they could have made it a little more premium in a sense of build quality, but I still have no complaints about build quality. It still is a premium feeling device. I like the grip on it. I like the ergonomics of it. I like the sliding mechanism of it. Just overall, I really like the design of it. Just they couldn't deliver on the software side of things. And of course, as always, I will keep you guys updated on this device as Marshmallow comes around and software updates gets pushed to it. I'll let you know how it is. I'll do update videos. So stay tuned for that. Click that subscribe button for more. I hope you enjoyed this video. Click the thumbs up if you did. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. All links in the description video below. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching.